<clears throat> Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how you doing? Big Porky here. The voice of hardcore boxing. Uh, not really done out for a couple of days. Just had a bit of a break. Uh, I'm just on my way to pick my queue up now. I've been... I've been waiting... I don't know, I think it's a fair old bit now to collect it. I've had it... Uh, refurbished and we'll see uh, should be alright took it to David Bowen Kills haven't we he's the man innit so they tell me so it's all good positive stuff innit so I can't wait to get my hands on it I'm gonna go over to Rotherham I think then and open it up I want to go in my local pub there's a table in there in fact two locals that I use but I'm not being big headed or anything, but if I start going in there with your queue, I'll just get Mickey took out me. Oh, he's here with his queue. Oh god, is it snooking or not boxing? Plus leg pullers, you know, people that are ten years older that can't even hold a queue. Never mind, own one. Uh, and plus, plus, I don't. I like to be on my own. I like to go. I don't, I don't mind going and playing my pal Paul or Nicola, but I like to go to have two or three hours on my own and think, get me thinking head on about boxing, about mixing it up a little bit because we're two thirds at way there, way there now with, with YouTube, with all the targets that we've hit. And I'm happy, we're really happy with how it's going, channel. And I just want to mix it up a little bit. I don't want to get bogged down with all the same old stuff. Uh, it's good to evolve, isn't it? A bit like Eddie Hearn's doing, isn't it? Really, he's evolving, isn't it? We this KSI thing, uh, but everybody in boxing industry knows that Eddie Hearn, he's only doing this KSI thing because Daz own are on at him, aren't they? He's not eating numbers, has he? Everybody knows. I mean, I told everybody at the beginning you won't listen. Now they say they're playing long game, aren't they? They're trying to wait for NFL and NBA and all that lot. It ain't never gonna happen. That's only never gonna be what they what they're wanting, what they say they're gonna be. It ain't gonna happen. It's just not gonna work out for them. I'd like to see it work out, but I don't think they're gonna take over like they're talking. I mean, the way Eddie were talking a few months ago, it were Eddie Earns got billions and he's signing everybody, and it's the takeover. Hashtag. The takeover, as Ultratech Sports Raw said in his fantastic video, uh, which was the second best video he's ever done. The first best was the uh, World of Mongery. Now, I'd like to see him bring that back. World of Mongery. I'd like to see that come back. I like him. Uh, everybody knows right, that I always stick up for fighters, don't they? I always have done, I always will do. I like all fighters, don't I? Sometimes you can get into spats with them and say things you don't mean, but there's something that I feel inside me that any man who goes in boxing ring, they have a, bit, they have a little bit more respect from me. Even though I can give them stick. God have respect, man, these guys. You know, even even people like Steffi Bull. He got it ringed, didn't he? We all know he fought like a coward, don't we? But we all know what happened when he fought Amir Khan, don't we, Steffi? But he's got to have respect for getting in there to start with. It's an horrible game inside and out. Horrible. Get what you can out of the job. But don't bullshit me. Don't bullshit me. I don't suffer fools gladly. Don't bullshit me. I don't want to hear bullshit. I'm from Mick Whale's school of thought. I don't want to hear it. I don't put away any bullshit off anybody. Not Dennis, not anybody. People keep saying, what did they say, I'm a kiss ass or something. I think people need to come and actually sit in some meetings that I have with Dennis, which is two or three times a week. I think people need to go and have a word with Mick Whale and actually sit and hear me. Don't let Dennis walk all over me. No. 
because somebody's got a few quid and they can say what they want. No. So whoever said that, I noticed that. I do read comments. I read them. Usually read them uh, on a Friday morning. It's my comment day. I check everything, but. It is what it is, isn't it? People can have an opinion, there's no wrong with having an opinion, but keep it clean, lads. But me being an arse that around Dennis, no, I don't think so. <laughs> no way. Oh, what sort of, who, right, who in the boxing industry can leave Dennis Hobson hanging in a restaurant in Leeds and drive off? Oh, you got O'Hara Davis there, Josh Wannington, IBF guy, we're all there. And I left him, drove on in his car, and didn't speak to him for five months. Now, who, who, who does that? Who can do that to Denison? Not, first of all, not even get a slap, because that's a slappable offence, that, isn't it? You're unprofessional of me. Not even get a slap. Right. <laughs> and when I was coming round corner, after going and collecting my car from his house, he would come in that corner about an hour and a half later. So, look, things happen, don't they? But I've never been a kiss ass, not around Dennis, never. So, Steffi Ball, you're wrong for spreading them rumours. I did wear my way in, though, didn't I? <laughs> but you've got to do, haven't you? Right, I'm just at Wadiff. I'm just going to collect this queue. Better get some pennies, I know. Friday, innit? Big day for me, Friday. I think it's 25. I think it's 60 quid, actually. Should have been a lot more, but it's done me a deal. Right, two seconds. Oh, look at this. I'll show you when I get to off, but this queue is fantastic. Fantastic. Look at that. Look at that, he's put a new thing on it and everything. Whatever that black thing is. Straightened it out. Look at that, man. Can't believe it. Refurbed a 1947 queue for me for 60 quid. And I was told 200 quid off one company, 60 quid. Obviously, I'm gonna give a mention on channel David Bowen queues. If anybody plays pool or snooker or billiards, why go out? I've had it straightened as well. Why go out and spend you know 500 quid on a queue, which is a lot of money, in it? Which is what I nearly did. Paul from Barnsley, what a gentleman he is, Josh and the Gwyn Wales friend. He's uh could have gone then, could have shit. Ooh. He uh gave me this queue, it's a 1947 queue. Uh I was gonna give me dad for his birthday but I'm not gonna know, I don't really I don't think we're that close to be honest, me and my dad but uh Otherwise he'd have took it, wouldn't he? He said, I'm already got a queue. But, you know, I'm going to keep it for myself. And Paul gave it to me, so I've had it refurbed. It's the exact height and the weight that I want. So all the rest don't really matter to me, but it's nice to have a straight queue, isn't it? And there's no excuses now. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I should be able to improve my game now. But I have to have something else that's set boxing, because sometimes you can have a boxing overload or you can have a... And then it's obs and overload, can't you? If you if you seeing him on a regular basis, so I, I think that it's good to take time out in it and do something else except just talk boxing all day. Or you know what I mean? Spend a bit of time with your children. And, whoa, my God! You know, they took me out in then. People trying to avoid puddles are swerving in my lane, that's not good, is it? But no, uh, you can, you, it's good to just have a break, in it? Take your kids somewhere, take your kids out, take them for a walk. Cheapest thing to do with your kids, take them for a walk, because you can get to talk to them, can't you? Because there's no ice cream fans in way, is there? And when my son, uh, my son's autistic, 
well, it's just he's been, he's on this two year thing for autism, he's 10 months into it, you know, his assessment. And he's seven in November, so when he, he has an ice cream van, he loses his shit, he loses his mind when he is an ice cream van. Uh, so it's good to take him for a walk in it where there's no ice cream vans. Or protect him as the my daughter loses her mind if she sees any of them magazines. You know that you get a free toy with. She loses her shit. So you keep him out of supermarkets or out of uh, shops and I've got to keep ice cream vans away from my son Reggie. Ice cream man! Ice cream man! Jesus! So no ice cream man's here. Anybody who's a parent will know that when ice cream man noise, it's a great sound, isn't it, when you're a kid? But when you're a parent and you're fucking out every two minutes, it's not that it's not the fucking out, is it? It's the messing about going and standing and queuing with all neighbours. Ice cream man, Jesus, in bare feet. Ice cream man always comes when you don't want him to come, doesn't he? Do you know what I mean? I think so. But, yeah, my son loses his shit. So he's an ice cream man or Thomas the Tank Engine, out like that. You know, when I used to live at Cunningsborough, uh, where I lived, you could see from bedroom window trains going by and at Hard at Windy you could see Dave Allen's flat and then you could see trains go by and at night if train went by my little boy would be up at Windy that the train oh, he loves trains but he's getting back to boxing uh, it's good to take a break in it I suppose I think so I think so but and then I, you can you can regrow. I think that's what I've done last few days. Just can't be asked doing any uh, any videos. Just can't be asked. Sometimes you can go around in circles, can't you? Look at this here. Right. Sometimes you can go around in. I feel like I'm going around in circles uh, with boxing. Sometimes your opinion can uh, upset people. You know, if you say certain things like. For example, if I think that so-and-so beat so-and-so, well, sometimes it does some, some people don't agree with you, but it's, it can up, cause eruptions, but it's boxing, isn't it? I'm not going to be like Coogan Cassius, am I? Sat on fence. Do you know what I mean? They have to keep it professional, don't they, because the... They've got press access, haven't they? Which is something that I've got and I'll probably never have, but I ain't really bothered that much. I would have liked to have had Eddie Earn on channel. Because I think that Eddie should answer these questions that the fans took the time out to send in to me. Uh, PorkyCorner at mail.com Keep your questions coming in because what I'm going to do, I'm going to forward these questions on to Eddie and I've got his email, but he ain't going to come on channel, is he? But I think his dad's a bit more transparent, isn't he? Barry Earn is more transparent than Eddie. But I think that I don't think they'd let Barry Earn near me because it's very rare he does interviews unless you're going to tickle his feet. Now I saw an interview with Barry Earn. Uh, we sporting icons on telephone, and I thought the questions that he asked him were all right, but for 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 the for the actual tickling of his feet ones, but he never mentioned stub up. He never mentioned why they put pay per view up from fifteen quid to seventeen quid to twenty quid. He never mentioned that, but yet the quality of the amount of the quality of the fights has gone down on it on pay-per-view which we've proved we've proved how many world title fights that they've been putting on non pay-per-view which is non-existent more or less in on a on a regular saturday and but yet they've put the pay-per-view up to 20 pound but yet we're not getting better value uh we're not getting the world title fights in these pay-per-views 
and so I would have liked to have asked I would have liked sporting icons who obviously has access to them because he's probably a favourite of theirs. There's nothing wrong with that. He's carving his way out in his sporting icons, but I would have liked to have seen him and ask Barry Earn questions about Stubbub. Like I said, pay-per-view. They're just a couple of questions off the top of my head. Uh, ask him about the wilder money. Uh, ask him about uh, telling the truth when Barry Hearn said he tells the truth. And I believe Barry Hearn these days, things he says. Barry Hearn said, let's make the wilder fight a couple of years down the line. Well, it looks like it's going to be that, isn't it? They want to get it at the very, very end where they can get the most money. And what that will mean is that Barry Hearn and Anthony Joshua and Eddie Hearn and all those people around them, they're setting themselves up for life, they're setting their children up, their children and their children. Whereas us mere mortals who are paying the subscription fees, we're all just doing our best to get ourselves in a situation where we own an house paid off. Whereas these people, they're owning houses and generations will own houses. I think I've come wrong way now. Uh, I have. No, I haven't. Yeah, I've come wrong way. So that's how I look at it, and I just think that there's got to come a time where this pay-per-view has got to all come to an end. And I think we're going to have an overload until they get it banned. I mean, if, if they pulled out pay-per-view, if they rinsed it that much that it got stopped again, like the Audley Harrison David Hay fight, if that happened, I think that we could be looking at Eddie Earn bailing out of boxing. Because he, he, they don't need money, do they? Eddie doesn't need the money. It's just become about, about money for them, though, hasn't it, now? It's... It's not become about the fights. For example, Conor Ben. But is, is he still world, world ranked number six by the WBA? Because there was that much backlash after that that I think Conor Ben's ranking went downwards, didn't it? Even though he'd had a win after that ranking. I mean, how on earth has Conor Ben ended up world number six? So for Conor Ben to move forward, he'd have to be fighting guys ranked number five and upwards, wouldn't he? Whereas, I'd just like to see Conor Ben fight Anthony Tomlinson, which I think he will fight him. I think they'll, uh, Steffi will put Tomlinson in with Conor Ben, because Anthony will take that fight, and if Eddie rings up and offers it, Steffi will won't say no. They won't say no, because he can't say no to Eddie, can he? Because he needs Eddie, doesn't he? Because he doesn't want to work with Frank, does he? So, and which is his choice, isn't it? Same as Caldwell, he won't work with Frank Warren, will he? They put all their eggs in one basket. But what they're forgetting is this. Frank will be here when Eddie Hearn's not, not here. And Frank's boxing, isn't he? Love him or loathe him, he is boxing, isn't he? That's just Frank. So, um, I'm not a massive fan of Frank Warren, but if you look at some of the biggest fights in history, he's behind him, isn't he? Now, you can't say he hasn't invested in his fighters. Nobody can say that either, can they? Now, when I say invest in your fighters, I mean, you, you know, even cleverlies of this world. British Commonwealth European World Champion, Billy Joe Saunders. British Commonwealth European and World Champion, all the way through levels. That's two guys just from debut. Now, who's Eddie had from debut that's done that? Joshua didn't win European. Callum Smith. Did Yafai win European? I think he might have done. Callum Smith, Yafai. Charlie Edwards went European? I don't know, but he's had him from debut and he won a world title with him. Joshua won a world title with him, that's four. And his dad had a BI, that's five. That's it. Five. Five people. So where's the other 42, is it? 43? Let's say 50, but I know it's about 40 odd. Where's all the 40 odd world champions come from? Boxing, isn't it? They're not come from Eddie, have they? Not coming from what he's invested in, has he? Or his dad? No, because they get other fighters, don't they? They attract other fighters that are unhappy with their stable when other people have put the yardage in. I don't like that. But that's boxing, isn't it? It's how it goes, and I don't like to go over all ground here because 
the material that I've been jotting down the last couple of days is some good material that I've got and things are looking all right really good we're going to change it up a bit with my driving glasses on yeah we're going to change it up a bit that's better but it is what it is isn't it does anybody know where Dillian White's B sample is I'm just curious that's all is that Am I being a hater there, asking for Dillian White's B sample? Uh, this is what I heard, right? I heard when it happened, they were told, come off social media until it's all sorted. So Dillian White, who has come off social media, he doesn't really say anything, does he? But the other guy, he's on social media, so... I don't know. I don't know what the guy's name is, because he's got that many identities, but... I saw a video he's done this morning on IFL where he's going on about boxing fans and this and that and it's part of the game and all that. What's part of the game? What is part of the game? Saying that you're somebody else, because I've never heard that one before. I know who I am, I'm comfortable with my name and everybody knows there's no there's no there's no hid hidden on my part but what I do in boxing is I work with Dennis and I've got a channel with my business partner, Nicola. So I, I'm comfortable with what I do. I've got other business interests with Dennis Hobson. Uh, that's it. So I'm all right. I'm in a good position, aren't I? I'm in a good position to be me. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna come on here and say I'm so-and-so and so-and-so. Now, people say, oh, baby thing's gonna pull you. Well, what, what would he have to pull me about? If he pulls me, and says Porky did a video saying that I'm a fraud, I'd say, yeah, I did. Because you're saying that you're somebody else. So that to me is fraud, isn't it? Is that bogus? Where I come from, that is called bogus. So if you're going to pull me, give me a ring, we'll have a chat. I'll come up to one of the shows. I thought you might have come up on the last show uh, and, had a, and, I, and pulled me. I was looking forward to seeing you. But if he pulls me about saying, well, you're a fraud, he has to pull every other fan, doesn't he? Boxing fan. Because first and foremost, I'm a boxing fan who pays his subscription to BT Sport. And I put the time in and I don't take out the sport. I don't take out of the boxing and put the time in. We're trying to build some. Me and Dennis are trying to build some. Same as I'm trying to build some at Women's Channel. That's going to benefit Dennis as fighters, because when all said and done, everybody laughed, didn't they? When I set this channel up, what are you doing that for? Well, I was doing it. If you go and look at my very first video, I was doing it to give the NASA brothers and Liam Cameron some exposure, so they sold more tickets, so that it's it was easier for me to work with Dennis because. There was a time where every time I put a fight to Dennis, his exact words were five words, who's going to pay for it? And I said, well, you pay for it, don't you? You're a promoter. Yeah, but they don't do tickets. Well, let's get them doing tickets. That's how I come to be doing Porky's Corner. Uh, sadly, we're not working with Liam Cameron, but I tried to promote Liam Cameron and get him out there, but Liam's, he's not... He's not one of them kids. He's not like a Tyson Fury self promoter, is he, Liam? He can fight and he can punch. But he ain't one of them people. Uh, but it's Tommy Frank ain't one of them people either, is he? He's not controversial, is he, Tommy? Uh, do you know what? I'm going to go up here. This is getting stupid, this. Tommy's not controversial, is he? But I'd like to. He ain't looking at me. You nearly walked into the road, mate. Tommy's not controversial, but. We're trying to get him out there, and if you look, you'll see that Stig's got Tommy Fu Tommy Frank. I anyway, said Tommy Fury then. Stig's got uh, Tommy Frank out there, hasn't he? Last week or so, by hook or crook, Stig by hook or by crook, Stig has got Tommy out there. Uh, but it is what it is, isn't it? It's, uh, and good luck to Stig, honestly, he's, uh, he never done me any harm. I noticed a lot of people give him a lot of stick. But, Stig, Stig, innit? 
I don't think he should have put them tweets out where he's saying us and we because that ain't good is it because he don't work for Den does he but I ain't got a problem with if he wants to put a video out saying he thinks that Tommy Frank's a good fight against Sonny and he thinks that Anthony Tomlinson's a good fight against Tyrone Nurse. If you want to put videos out like that, Stig, or anybody wants to, that's good. It's no, that's what social media is for, isn't it? But how does it get from him state from Stig saying he thinks they're good fights to people calling him a nonce and things like that? Well, in my opinion, how that's come about is he's outside a pub and he's saying to people, lads that are 18 year old, how old do you think I look? Well. That's not against the law, is it? But it's not cool, is it, Stig? So you do shoot your Senate foot a bit, Stig, but he means well, doesn't he? And anybody that means well, and let's bear in mind, Stig's not got a criminal record, he's never been in trouble in his life. I know that, so... So for anybody, for people to call him certain names, it's not good, is it? Although he don't help himself, and when he does get involved in something, he gets his teeth into it, he does come a bit, become a bit obsessive, doesn't he? Like, he was trying to get the point across with Tyson Fury for about four years. That he's better than Ali and that, you know, well in that four year, since he beat Vladimir, it's still his only world title win. So, they're the stats, aren't they? But we're in a poor era now for heavyweight boxing. Everybody can beat everybody in the top 15. Yui Fury beat Parker, he didn't get the decision. Parker beat Ruiz. Ruiz didn't get the decision, and Ruiz beat Joshua, he knocked Joshua out. So it, going from Yui, who's probably top 15, isn't it, Yui? Yui's in the top 15. Going from Yui, top 15, all the way up, they can all beat each other on any given day. So, but Stig gets passionate, doesn't he? But I was a bit disappointed to read the tweets. I wanted to tweet something, actually, but... What, what can you say to all that? It's just craziness, isn't it? But I was a bit disappointed to see Enzo Macronelli getting involved. It's like they wanted to have last say, didn't they? A bit disappointed to see that from Enzo. Other people jumped on, didn't they? Trying to stir the boat. But... It is what it is, isn't it? Trying to stir the boat and probably make it look bad on me because I invited him, didn't I? He's been to three of our shows and... Trust me, I've had my head in my hands this week with some of the things Stig's done. But, that's boxing, isn't it? He's not killed anybody. And, you know, sometimes you meet people and you have them come to boxing shows and they're not all who they think they are. They're not all they say they are, although Stig's always says he is, because I've had him checked out, but he's, he's, he gets carried away, doesn't he? Can you imagine Stig going to a, a VIP? being a VIP at a boxing event and backstage and all that and then going to after party and everybody else is having to fill forms in when they go into the casino and Stig just breezes in then somebody's coming up to you and giving you a uh, giving, you've got dolly birds walking around with trays of drinks and so Stig were in his element but he's not doing anything wrong has he and like I said you know I get, I get 10 VIP I invite 10 every show don't I so my guess. Not everybody wants to come. Not, boxing's not everybody's cup of tea, is it? Some of my mates don't even come. But it's boxing, isn't it? It's boxing. 21. So, but I enjoyed the show and I enjoyed the after party, although I was sober. And one drink, I think. Whoa! Rectified tyre pressure. Front left. Ooh, tire pressure. Hope I haven't got a slow puncher. But I've run over a nail or something. Do you know where that nail will have been? Let me get out. Look at this tire. I know where that is. Look at Messi, I know where that is. That'll be outside Dennis's yard, that. But I've got a nail in my tyre. 
rectify tyre pressure. God, that's going to do my head in that now. Rectify tyre pressure. 215. 215 is that pound, isn't it? That'll be outside Dennis's yard, that. All them wagons with screws and all stuff, man. Anyway, getting back to Stig. So it is what it is, isn't it? He hasn't done no wrong, has he? What has he done? Not killed anybody, has he? And I thought he got a bit of an harsh time. But like I said, he doesn't help himself, does he? He doesn't help himself. He doesn't help himself. But like I said, a lot of them people giving him a hard time. Well, I mean, they're not out there, are they? They're not putting themselves out there. And you have to, you have to get yourselves in a position with this to ignore them, but like I do. I don't take them on now, do I? I don't interact because it, I won't have no time to do it. So I have my say in videos like I'm doing now. My my say to them is this: go put yourself out there and let's see what you look like. Because half of you lot that send me emails, I don't believe half of you know who you say you are. Some of you might seem genuine, some of you have been emailing me a long time, but we know what it is, don't we? So, at first they try and pal me up to find out stuff and all these double agents, everybody's living secret lives, look. Go and get a life is what I say. Go and get a life. When you're under suspicion, I, have, I, I just say to people, do you think it's him who's sending it? Go tell me what, what he was tweeting. And go, and go have a look at certain people and they'll go find out and they send me stuff and I think bloody hell it was him it's easy to catch us but what, what is this a game of cat and mouse what is it it's social media isn't it send you mad won't it so what you have to do you have to ignore it you have to ignore it that's what I do ignore it just have to just have say don't you on uh, I have to say on my videos, don't know, that tie thing has done me head in that. You can tell, can't you? You can tell it's done me nothing, that. Coco. You keep your 60 quid valet, Coco. Cheeky fucker. Uh, but what can you do? It's, uh, it's a cruel world we live in, but... People said he's Stiggy mate. Well, I don't know really, is he? I'd have said he was. He's been to three shows. I've seen him in Derby. Derby Arms in, sorry, in Epsom. He wanted pain though, didn't he, to take me into London to see Jimmy Tibbs. He's got some front old Stig, hasn't he? Then turns up at our show. Hey? Breezing about, like Young's place. The Stig. The Stiginator. Right, he's got his son out there, hasn't he? So he's there to be shot down, isn't he? When you put your son out there, you're there to be shot down. This is why a lot of them, they don't want to go in front of the camera. Because they might not like how they look or, or how they dress or they might not want people to comment. I mean, I've actually had people comment about bottles of aftershave that I've got in a bedroom that haven't moved. Somebody's actually said, this is when I lived at the other house, you haven't used all them aftershave. Why have you got... 16 bottles, it's actually 22 mate, but why have you got, is it this email, why have you got 16 bottles of aftershave porky, and you're only using one, and, I've, and I thought, I want to normally email back, and I've emailed back, why do you know I'm only using one, which I were, because we blew the picture up, and the other ones have got dust on, <laughs> and I've been cleaned, that's not my job, but I have to tell me clean it, won't I, get them aftershaves wiped, because Jonathan from Aldershot has pointed out that you're only using one bottle of aftershave rust, so that's no good. Uh, do I pull up in here and get some? Do I pull up in here and get some? Do I pull up in here and get a thingy token? Yeah, I think I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna do. So I'll not settle, will I? Then we'll find. And do you know what? Another thing is. Don't ever put them metal Mercedes dust caps on because they freeze on and they knock your tyre sensors up. They knock, knock them up and that's what I bet that is there on the left. It's the one that's knackered. 
but it is. But it's knackered. So that, I don't think there's a nail in the tyre. Look at this here, traffic. But what can you do? So Pork is going to pull up now and put some tyre pressure in. So it'll dust on my head in otherwise, won't it? Get over there. Oh, there's always somebody using air fresh air tyre things. Are you using it? No, we're going here. Right, I don't even know air pressure for this. I don't even know. Oh, bit of Leo Lacoste. I don't want people thinking I'm a scrubber. Oh, hang on a minute. Hey, yeah, mate. Don't forget to email us saying me me head sweaty. Forgot your name or did it? You're a troll, aren't you? So, where's that? I think I've got some money in here. Envelope day Friday. People paying me in change. That's not good, is it? Two seconds. Uh, I've just put tyre pressure thing on there, and it's. <laughs> It's not good, not looking good. It's took it right down. I've gone down to like about forty pound in it. Uh, I don't know if I should be driving in this like this. I'm to go really slow. Put hazards on. All this for. A, I'm never going to get to use my Q, am I? No, I don't put hazards on. Uh, so I'm knackered now. I don't know whether to risk it. I don't know whether to risk it. He's not answering his phone. I've got a green flag here, but if you ring it, it counts as that you've had a mark, doesn't it? So your money don't go down, does it, next year? Your fee? I don't know whether to. I don't know, I'm going to end up holding all traffic. I'd go mad if somebody's doing 20 in a 30. I'm just going to go really slow. Doesn't seem to be. I used to have a, a Cortina years ago when I was a teenager, 2 litre JL on X Reg, 2 litre, 2 litre GL it was. And I went flying around the corner one day and the tyre went over alloy. But I knew it was low, but this has got no air in it whatsoever. Look, steering wheel's going to left. Got a flat, mate, I know. Go on, you spoke to him. Yeah, it says you're alright to drive, mate. Oh, I'm, dri I'm driving anyway because I'm stupid, aren't I? But yeah, I'm just I'm only doing 20. Right. Alright, I'll come and get yours then. Alright. Yeah, alright. Right, anyway. right. right. Hawk is driving through Edlow really slow at like 18 mile an hour with tail back here. Oh, sorry mate, I'll have to put my hazards on. Oh, shame of it, man. I'm embarrassed. Look at this. I'm going to go away with like this. Oh, no, I don't fly. I don't fly up here, no. Uh, so. Oh, just my day. I need my chalk anyway. Test me cue at that. Uh, this is not good, this is it. This is not good at all. Look at tail back here. Hawk <laughs> has got tyre pressure problems. She was alright. For Edlow. I might as well just swap it, and I she was hers. It's out. All right, Berkey. Uh, slow. I'm going here, man. 
battery's gonna go any second now, it's flashing. Go on, I'm not having a good day today, am I? Not having a good day at all. Right, let's uh let's get off. Oh god, we're in Chuggington special here, aren't we? Chuggington. Chuggy 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 chuggington chuggington. Right, let's have a look here how this works. Fucking light, there we are. Right. Oh. We got any petrol in this? Oh, she's got a full tank. Unlucky. Unlucky. I think I'm going to go to, uh, I don't want a quick hour. Yeah, I think I'll go to Wolf. I like it there. People are nice. I don't think they're very genuine up here, Rob, Ram. A lot of stuck up people up there. So, where were I there? Oh, forget that. Tire gate, yeah. Well, a bit of air in it. And it'll, uh, it'll go down again, won't it? They come on for a reason, don't they, them tire sensor lights? Probably another sensor or a... I don't know. Slow puncture, nailing it or something. It'll be a nail, won't it? It'll be a nail, I can blame Dennis for that. There's loads of nails in there outside his scrap yard. Unbelievable. Dennis knows that because every car he's ever had he's got lights flashing on dashboard telling him there's nails in tyres and whatnot. But uh, I don't like all like that. I mean, you can't drive a car if it's got a light flashing. I have to have them took off and repaired. It comes on for a reason, doesn't it? But getting back to uh, have a look. getting back to Nigel Ben. Let's have a little chat about Nigel. Oh, Nigel. Let's have a chat about Nigel Ben, right. I was a fan of Nigel Ben's, but and I had a photograph of him in a frame on my wall. But for some reason, I mean boxers are funny people aren't they? They, they piss you off very easily, don't they? They can set some and they can piss you right off. He started coming out with certain things. He started coming out with certain things about Carl Frotch that I didn't like. I know Carl doesn't help himself at times with some of the things he said, but he's, he, Nigel Benz saying that he's the best WBC champion that the WBC have ever had. That's what they've told him, probably because he's got the most defences for uh, a WBC champion, which is fair enough, isn't it? But he's saying the WBC is saying that him and Carl Zaghi are what best. Well, they'd have to put Carl Zaghi in that bracket because they were 46 and 0, but why can't they put... Well, they can't put Sven Otke in that bracket because he he run defeated, but he didn't fight any WBC fights, did he? Because Kala Saula never had any pull with WBC. Never has and never will. Uh, getting back to Carl Zaghi, how many fights did he have with WBC? Didn't have that many, did he? So maybe you could say Nigel Benz got the best WBC record because he had the most defences with WBC, didn't he? But who did he defend against? That's what I want to know. Who's Nigel Benz's best win with WBC? You'd have to say Gerard McClellan, wouldn't you? And people say that's a great win, and it is because it was a brutal, brutal fight. But should have been stopped in round one, maybe, maybe not. He, he were given every advantage, but where that leaves a question mark for me against Nigel Ben's record, and I'm not saying that because I'm now not a fan of his. Of course I were a fan, I were a massive. I were a Nigel Ben groupie. I were a Nigel Ben groupie that ended up a Carl Frotch groupie. But Nigel Ben beat Gerald McClellan, who on the night weighed 165. Do you know what I mean? 165. 165 on the scales, and he was a middleweight, wasn't he? He was a middleweight. Coming up his first fight. This is why weight divisions are dangerous. You've got a world champion coming up eight pound, and he got beat on the night and hospitalised, and he's, you know, he's cabbage, didn't he? But K1 
Kel Brook went up two weight divisions against a bigger puncher at the time than Nigel Benn. Golovkin's a bigger puncher than Nigel Benn by a county mile, by a country mile, sorry. You count me, where did I get that from? Fucking losing it, aren't I? So, should Nigel Benn be fighting? No way! Charlie Giles told me that they refused him license, told me. I sat there having dinner with him and a few whiskers. Alright, Charlie. But no. Nigel Benn will refuse a license, the same as Charlie Giles refused Rio Ferdinand's license. He give, he give Freddie Flintoff one. You tell me. Nigel Benn, everybody in the boxing industry knows that he's only coming back for one fight. Why one fight? Why just one? Why not a few fights? Why one? Well, he's going to be fighting Beaker, who's based out in Australia, so he'll know Beaker, won't he? Because that's where he's based. He's fighting Sakio Beaker, right, who's 40 years of age. I don't want to hear that, hear everybody say, well, he's fighting an old man himself. Sakio Beaker, right, were fighting in top fights two years ago. Two years ago, right? He was fighting the creme de la creme of his division two years ago. What was Nigel Ben doing two years ago? So, this is how I look at it, and it all boils down to money. But people have to mask it. Why should Nigel Ben come back into boxing and just decide that he's a 15 quid fight? Who wants to pay 15 quid to watch Nigel Ben fight Saki Abika? Come on! Nobody wants to say anything, do they? Nobody dare say a word who's connected to Matchroom. They're all saying, well, it's our Nige, isn't it? It's our Nige, you know? It's a geezer. It's our Nige. It's Connor's dad, isn't it? Look, what gives Nigel Ben the right to come back to boxing after all this time? I just decided that he's a 15 quid pay per view fighter against fucking Beaker. Come on. Beaker, who's probably been on the beak. Beaker, who wants to see him, anyway, in a pay-per-view? But Nigel Ben's saying, I'm a pay-per-view fighter. It's all you're gonna get is the novelty act. So the Nigel Ben fans are gonna tap into Ben fans from back in the day, and Nigel Ben's gonna come out with all that Dark Destroyer stuff, and I'm a war, I'll have a tear up all the way, mate, all the way. All the way, mate. I'll match him all the way. We're going to have all that, aren't we? It's just a kick in the teeth for boxing fans. But nobody dare say anything. Have you noticed all these YouTubers? Nobody wants to say anything. Why? Because Nigel have a tear up. Probably pull you about it. Listen, Pork is going to set some out. It is nothing short of scandalous. Scandalous! Nigel Ben there in an interview is saying, well, yeah, I'm going to go back to, uh, back to doing me pool, doing me garden, sat on my lawnmower, yeah, and pocketing a couple of million quid in process, aren't you? Are our boxing fans hard earned money? What gives Nigel Ben the right, after 23 years, to come back in an exhibition fight? and charge 15 quid, because that's all it is. It's two retired fighters that have been licensed and they're going to give you all that waffle about, yeah, he's fitter than an average man and he's fitter than some 30-year-old pros that are British champions and all that. What a load of bollocks. It's a load of bollocks. It's a cash grab. Where's he from? Oh, he's from Essex. Oh, he's training at Matchroom Gym. All that lot at Matcham walking around saying, yeah, it's, uh, it's nice, isn't it? He's, he, he's, he'll have a tear up, he's, he's been training ages, he's in good condition. You know all that nonsense, and I mean nonsense, because that's what it is. Utter nonsense. Do you know what I mean? Utter nonsense. Give me a bad head, man. He's taking piss. It's a piss tech. And all them people that in the boxing industry, right? It's like I've just had, to, I've just had, to, well, I think I fell out with him now. 
I just had a conversation with somebody this morning about it, right? Listen to this, and he's like, well, you know, I'm all for it, and he's all right, and I saw him at an evening with her, and blah de blah. Are you having a fucking laugh, mate? Are you having a laugh? Nigel Ben charging 15 quid to fight Beaker. No, what's happened is Nigel Ben seen all this money in boxing, and he's thought, do you know what? I'm going to have some of that. If Nigel Ben says he needs closure, right? We had all this closure thing, didn't we? A lot, a bit back, didn't we? He wants closure. Well, let me tell you this, right? Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. If Nigel Ben says what he's said this on IFL, it's not about money. Well, if it's not about money, Nige, why don't you just give it to charity? If it's not about money and take your expenses, it's about having closure. Well, you can go and have a spa with anybody, can't you? Go spa somebody at Matchroom's gym. Go spa somebody at Matchroom's gym who comes in to spa John Ryder. Go fight John Ryder. John Ryder will accommodate you. Go and fight one of Eddie Hearns, like heavyweights. Go get Miles Shinquink in with you, or somebody like that. Do you know what I mean? Go get somebody in there with, uh, and, and spar them. You don't need to charge 15 quid. behind him miles him but no I don't want I don't want to hear that I don't want to hear it Nige I don't want to hear it 15 quid so we've got to pay 15 quid for that an undercard what will that be that'll be dog shit won't it because he'll want to take as much money as he can on front show it's people wanting to dip the pockets it's that Essex mob again isn't it yeah let's just bent fan I tell you what Let's just bend the fans over backwards eh, and grease them. Let's grease the fans. Let's put it into sport. Let's give it some, because I bet she hasn't been giving it some. Woo! That'll do me. Woo! I'll tell you what, them remaps make a difference, don't they? But no! Uh, I'm not having it! I'm not having it at all! 15 quid! It's fucking liberty, man! To liberty, do you know what? I don't want to hear all this what he's spinning because and who's to say that Beaker might not even he'll probably go easy on him. They want to get a few quid, don't they? Beaker's Beaker's ended up with not much. Chan would say he were a world champion. He didn't have any big paydays. This will probably be his biggest payday. They'll have Beaker, I don't know. I don't know what they'll be paying Beaker, but Beaker's probably not had more than four hundred thousand pounds in a payday in his career, right? He'll be giving half that. He'll be getting a couple hundred grand. They'll not want to pay him more. They'll not want to pay him that much, but... Now, it leaves a bad taste in my mouth. A real bad taste in my mouth. When you're seeing all this yarn that they're spinning, well, I want a bit of closure, don't I? I want a bit of closure. I mean, I have to watch what I say, because it's Robin Reed's good mate, isn't it? But this is how I look at it, right? It's fucking liberty, man. It's a liberty. Do you know what I mean? It's a liberty, but... But what can you do? I mean, Robin Reed would have took the fight. Uh, Robin Reed would have took the fight, and Robin's got an agreement. If he did, he would have had, a, had to have a deal with Den, which wouldn't have been a problem. Den would have been acted as his agent for him, because Robin si uh, didn't sign. He've got a verbal agreement with Robin on Porky's Corner that if he does have a fight, were involved, but I don't think Robin will come back, but, well he would do, but he'll not get that kind of money that he wants off Nigel Ben. so, but it is what it is, isn't it? What next, Clinton Woods coming back? Well, Clinton's been retired 10 years now, it's 10 years and 2 months since Clinton Woods' uh, last fight, so Matt Nigel's been out 23 years, well how about Clinton Woods coming back? Clinton Woods against Nigel Benn at light heavyweight. Why not? One's hard at ring 23 year, one's hard at ring 10 year. Maybe I should put that to Dennis when I see him this weekend. I also said, Dennis, what about... What about uh, Clinton against Nigel Benn? Do you reckon that's a good fight then? Fucking window wipers were on, is that it? Clinton Woods against Nigel Benn. That'd be a good fight, wouldn't it? Two guys, but this is how I look at it. Nigel Benn 
his last three fights, he lost his last three fights, hasn't he? He lost on points to Malinga, even though he dropped him late on. And he lost to Steve Collins twice. First fight did his ankle, but I think he was looking for a way out, wasn't he? Second fight, it was just a case of getting them coffers in bank, was it? And then he was done with boxing, washed up at 31, took all that punishment, got out, got a few quid, fair enough. Nigel Benton's not boxed in 23 years. Right, 23 year. So he's going to live off the Ben name, just like his son is doing. Come on then. That indicator's on the other side of this. Oh my god. Oh, but like I said, I'm, I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed at all. And I think that all them people that are going to pay 15 quid, they're going to do it for nostalgia, aren't they? Because it's like car crash, isn't it? I probably might even pay it myself. I've had a moan, I'm probably going to have to pay it myself, aren't I? It's Car Crash TV and we're, we're, we're attracted to Car Crash, aren't we? It's like Tyson Fury's reality programme that they're going to bring out. That'll be Car Crash, won't it, like you could never imagine. Can you imagine that? It'd be like real life Snatch, won't it? That will be... They'll do millions. Tyson will do millions on that. Something will happen and it'll be in papers every day. And they'll all get the 15 minutes worth of fame, won't they? All them around Tyson, but... Forget that, that's not boxing. This is boxing. This is Nigel Benn charging 15 quid. I don't want to see it. He's going to ruin his legacy. Nigel Benn beat set, has got seven wins over world champions. Seven. Christopher Eubank Sr. has got four. But Nigel Benn has got seven. And he's had half the world title fights that Eubank's had, or just maybe just under half. But this is how I look at it. Sugar Ray Leonard beat seven, has got seven wins over world champions. So has Marvin Agler. So has Andre Ward, and so has Nigel Ben. They've all got same in common, right? But this is how I look at it. When I look at Nigel Ben's career, I see that it ended 23 years ago. 23 years ago. So he shouldn't be nowhere near a boxing ring. He's 56. His next birthday. Nah, uh, yeah, he stayed in shape and that. He's got to at least get down on weight, hasn't he? But come on. Come on. 23 year. He had it ring 23 year. Can't get my head around it. But he's going to come back and charge 15 quid now. I don't think I'd be screaming from rafters, to be honest, or from rooftops, whatever it is I'm supposed to be screaming from. I don't think I'd be doing that if it were for free, but. What does that say about all these young fighters they've got around today who are trying to get the Suns pay-per-view? No, it's alright, Nigel. You can come back, can't you? Well, what sort of people are around Nigel Ben? Wanting to put him in ring with a guy who's 40-year-old uh, and he's just two years ago he's fighting in world titles. Nigel Ben shouldn't be anywhere because his body will have developed into a normal man's body. Look, Ricky Atten, right? We're out at ring years, wasn't he? Look what happened. Couldn't take a body shot off Senchenko. Couldn't take it. Because he, he were fit, but he weren't fight fit, were he? Might have been a little bit fight fit, but we're talking championship fight fit, aren't we? And Azure Ben's not fighting a champion, but he's not fighting a mug, is he? Beaker's a rough old dude. But I think, because Beaker's based in Australia, I think that this could be. I think it could be a bit of a piss take for fans, this. This could be. Liberties. This could be liberties like you've never, like you can never imagine. Now, all these other YouTubers that are not putting it on Nigel Ben over this. Why not? Because they probably don't. Well, I'll say Nigel. I think you're coming back for money. You want to call my channel, Nigel? Get you on phone me. I don't want to speak to him in person because I don't like people that abuse boxing industry. Now, this is abusing the boxing industry, abusing it like you can never imagine. Forget KSI Logan Paul, this is this is probably on them levels, but they bring in a bit of interest to boxing. Nigel in, is he? We've seen him, he's had his time, hasn't he? He's had his time and Beaker's not, not never been a pay-per-view fighter in his life. You close curtains when you watch Beaker, because he's just a rough houser, isn't he? And Nigel Ben hasn't got it. He ain't got it no more to mix with Beaker. He's probably gonna get hurt. Somebody'll save Nigel Ben 
If he takes punishment, they'll save him and pull him out. Too late then once you've all paid, isn't it? Well, he came, but Nigel can say, do you know what? I'm going to leave it to the young'uns. I'm going to leave it to the young'uns. I had a go. I've got a bit of closure. Got me checking. I'm off ski. I'm back to sitting on my lawnmower. Maybe Nigel Ben can't sit on his lawnmower no more. Maybe there's no petrol on his lawnmower. He needs to sit back on his lawnmower, old Nige. Good old Nige. Well, listen. Porky's Corner. No. No, 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 no. 15 quid. I'm not having it. I'm not having it at all. Fucking liberty. Liberties. Can't have liberties. They give me the um. Can't have the um. Can we? Can't have the um. At all. Can't have the um. Believe it, man. In liberties. I don't think it's this one. The next one, isn't it? Yeah. 15 quid to watch Nigel Ben Beaker. I'm having a laugh. You are having a laugh. It's only a babble. Fuck it, it's only a babble. Fucking liberty. It's a liberty, man. It's a liberty. And I'm going to tell it straight. Come on, then. Nearly ran into her husband then. Uh, I think I'm going to reverse in. Let's see if I can do this. It's not worse than driving somebody else's car, is there? Hello. No, it's a liberty. Nigel Ben's taking a liberty. Liberties. Liberties? Can't have liberties. Gives me the ump. leaf inside here man. Jesus. Yeah, of course I look after it Russ. Of course I look after it. There you go. So Nigel Ben, Matt, Nigel, you should leave it. Give it a miss. Give it a miss. We'll play Tiddlywinks or something Nigel. I don't want to hear it man. I don't want to hear it. Well I was smoking weed. I was taking ecstasy. I was smoking 40 Bensons a day. So what? It's your own fault that, isn't it? So now that you're training and you're not doing all that, do we have to pay 15 quid? Is that what we have to do? Because that is what's known as a liberty. Alright, peace out, bump.
Kirin. Just playing a few little delicate shots today. Seven. 